Hello, if you're just joining us on this mini-series, welcome. This is a mini-series where we show the dishes that derive from two chickens. We started off with one chicken and roasted it, and from that we had leftovers the following day and used it in chicken noodle soup. We have additional leftovers from that uh, roasted chicken and we'll be using it today in our uh, pizza. In addition to growing plants, I enjoy cooking them and showing folks some of the practical aspects of having a garden. And while we're not out getting ingredients for pizza from our garden, during the summer, the garden can provide fresh ingredients like uh, basil and bell peppers. And pizza is one of those things that is perfect for homesteaders and homebodies alike. It, you can make pizza with ingredients from your pantry, freezer, and your refrigerator. So today we'll be doing pizza and I'll be making the dough from scratch uh, and also going about it in a more artful process, meaning I'll be eyeballing much of the, uh, many of the ingredients with exception to the water. I'll be using one and a half cups of lukewarm water and the amount of water we start will determine the amount of dough we end up with. We'll start by making our dough. The following process is my basis for pizza crust, French bread, baguettes, croissants, Chinese donut, Chinese pocket donut, and bagel to name a few. In this mixer we have one and a half cups of warm water, about a tablespoon of sugar, and one and a half tablespoons of yeast. After mixing, we'll add enough all-purpose flour to make a slurry. Set aside to allow the yeast colony to grow and become active. The slurry will begin to bubble after 20 or so minutes. At this point, we add in more flour and about a teaspoon of salt. Here's where we really eyeball the amount of flour. We want just enough so that it starts to feel like dough. A soft and moist dough. To make things a lot easier, we will use a KitchenAid mixer with a dough hook. Let it knead, rest, knead, rest, and knead. More kneading is generally better for the dough. Kneading allows the glutens to build, making a better tasting dough. Conversely, it is possible to let time do the heavy lifting. The dough can be made early in the day and rested in the refrigerator. On a floured board, separate some dough to make a French bread or a baguette. Tuck the dough under to form a nice ball. Let them rest. While they rest, we add a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil to our large and deep pizza pan. The olive oil will give the crust its crunch. After allowing the dough to rest and proof, it will become more airy. We begin to form our crust by poking our fingers into it and begin to stretch it out. Press fingers in and splay them to stretch the dough. The key is to not push out all the air pockets that have been created by the resting dough. We also pick up the dough and allow gravity to stretch it. As gravity pulls on the dough, we turn the dough so that it can form a circle shape. Back on the board, we use our fingers once again to stretch out the dough. Another technique is to lift the dough with our fists and allow gravity once again to stretch it. Again, continue to turn the dough to maintain a circular shape. When the dough feels like it won't stretch anymore, let it rest for about 5 minutes. It will fill up with air pockets and become more workable. Get it close to the size of the pan, then place the dough on it. With a large pan, an exact fitting crust is difficult to transfer. Additionally, to get the dough to fitting size, it will require more time on the board. There is risk of the dough sticking to the board, and that is never good. In the pan, we press down to form the crust. Stretch the dough out a bit and let it rest some more. While we let it rest, we'll work on the French bread and our toppings. To make the bread, we press down on the dough and flatten it. Fold it and then roll it. Using a baker's cush, we allow the dough to proof in there.
Here's our roast chicken leftover. We cube it up and we still have some leftover for another dish. Our toppings will include sliced black olives, sliced mushrooms, and by the way, slicing mushrooms is always a fun task. And great with chicken toppings are sliced jalapenos. Shredded mozzarella is quite a versatile ingredient in the kitchen. For pizza and baking, always use low moisture cheese. This type of cheese re releases less water during baking. Too much water will lead to a soggy pizza. After all these years, I finally noticed that there is whole milk mozzarella cheese. I wonder how it'll taste. We'll try this cheese another day as we still have part skim cheese to use. Once again, here's the trick my mom taught me. Here's our crust after stretching it out one last time and allowing it to proof. The key to a good crust is to allow the dough to proof. Proofing means letting it rest and giving the yeast time to make air pockets. This brand of pasta sauce has become my favorite. It has good taste, is a good value, and comes in just the size I need. Here's a trick with lids. If it's hard to open, it is because it has a good vacuum seal. Use a spoon to wedge underneath to release the vacuum. You'll hear the refreshing sound of a pop. It'll be a lot easier to open it then. I use about half a jar of sauce. We'll save the rest to make tomorrow's dinner. Our toppings include cheese, pepperoni, roasted chicken, olives, mushrooms, and jalapenos. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees. The pan will start on the bottom of the oven. This will heat the olive oil quickly and give the crust some frying action. Depending on the oven, it can be as quick as 5 minutes or in this oven, closer to 10. Check on it with a wooden spatula. Lift the pizza from the pan and check the color. Move it to the middle rack when the crust is golden brown underneath. Bake until the bottom of the crust is slightly darker than golden brown. Again, depending on the oven, that's between 7 to 12 minutes longer. Once the pizza is out, we put a metal pie pan with water on the bottom of the oven. This will create a steamy environment for our bread. Make slits in the bread and bake for 12 to 14 minutes. Pan pizza with a crispy bottom. Top with mushrooms, roast chicken, black olives, sliced jalapenos, and pepperoni. Super delicious. We have a loaf of French bread to use in tomorrow night's dinner. And can you guess what we'll be making? Please check back to see what that is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.